Okay, welcome back to the last part of One Man's Faith today. We're looking at all things new. We're looking at the fact that we've got the chance to turn the corner as, as, as we come into this new year. Now, I'm not saying make resolutions. Uh, you know, if you make a resolution, that's fine as long as you keep it. But a resolution, in a sense, is an oath. It's a vow. And the Bible says don't make them because it gets you in trouble because you end up failing. So look and say, God, I'm with you. Show me. You said you would make all things new in my life. Do it, Lord. Let's go. Let's go. We were looking at the fact that I said that the original covenant got incorporated basically into three commands. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. You shall love your neighbor and you shall love one another. All of, all of the original covenant can be and is incorporated into those three. Jesus said that, that under, under the first two, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor, it's all fulfilled in those two commands. Then when he gave us the new covenant through his blood, uh, and in that last meeting with his disciples during, during the Passover supper that he had that we call the Last Supper, he says, oh, and, that, and Judas had left, he said, okay, a new commandment I give to you. You love one another in the same way that I have loved you, in the same manner and to the same degree that I have loved you. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for one another. That incorporates everything. You see, even the original covenant, if you look at the Ten Commandments, four dealt with God, the other six dealt with ourselves and each other. You see, that we, we had more, God had more concern about how we related to each other than He did about how we related to Him. There, there are more complications if you, want to, if you want to look at it that way. But if we can learn to love one another, we can fulfill all the law and the prophets. That's, that's, that's basically what He was telling us. Um, even Jesus, when He died, did you realize He was placed in a new tomb? He wasn't placed in an old tomb. It was brand new. Uh, Matthew 27 says, And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of rock, and he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and walked away. And Mary Magdalene was there and the other Mary. But he was placed in a new tomb. Even, even Jesus at his death wasn't placed in something old. He was placed in something new. I think this is interesting. And, he, and John 13 is where he gave, us, he gave us that new command. He gave us newness of life. Did you realize that? Romans 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? The answer to that is no. May it never be, he says in verse 2. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? You see, you are so new, you're no longer a sinner. You are not a sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner, you were saved by grace, now you're a new creature. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into His death? In other words, we died with Him. Therefore, we have been buried with Him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. That's not spiritual either. Spiritual is included. But we are new creatures. There's even a newness in the Spirit. In Romans 7, he says, For while we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law we're at work in the members of our body to bear fruit for death. But now we have been released from the law, having died to that by which we were bound, 
so that we serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. In the newness of the spirit. God is so fresh. He's refreshing. He's fresh. He's invigorating. He's reinvigorating. He, would, he does things that are new. You are a new creature. Yes, 2 Corinthians 5, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Gee, that sounds like something we read back in Isaiah, doesn't it? Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, namely that God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and He has committed to us the word of reconciliation. You see, God did away. When Jesus died, man, things changed. Everything became new. He died for you. He took on your past, present, and future sins so that they have nothing to do with you. He says, now these things are from God who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has passed away. If you've accepted Jesus, if you, say, if you said, Jesus, you are Lord of my life. You're a new creature. The old that you did and had in your life is gone. Now there are habits and things that you've got to deal with. Deal with them. Don't let them linger in your life to pull you back into that stuff. You've been saved from it. You are being saved from it. You will continue to be saved from it as long as you don't go back into it. What did he say in, verse, in, in chapter 6? Are we to, uh, how shall we who died to sin still live in it? The answer is we're not to live in it. But we do carry with us habits and things that we didn't get rid of when we should have when we accepted Jesus as Lord. Deal with them. Say, God, forgive me. I will not do these again. And learn to walk in the power of the Spirit of God that will carry you through and make you that new creature that you've been called to. In Ephesians 4, he carries it along. He says, so by the... so." This I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer as the Gentiles. Or in other words, can I say, as you walk no longer as you used to before you knew Jesus in the futility of their minds, being darkened in their own understanding, professing to be wise, they became fools, is what Proverbs tells us. Excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. But you, verse 20 of chapter 4 of Ephesians, but you did not learn Christ this way. If indeed you've heard of Him. That is, in reference to your former manner of life, the old, you lay it aside, which has been corrupted, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new, the new self, which is in the likeness of God, and it has been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. You put on a new person. You became a new person. Remember he said in Romans, the old died? The old died? The new was resurrected. So when you accepted Jesus, you died. Your baptism shows you that. You go under the water, and if I hold you under the water, you die. See, it's a perfect example of death because you go under that water. 
when you come up out of it, it's resurrection, and you've been resurrected. The old is past, the new has come. The old is past, the new has come. Colossians says something similar. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body to be dead. Consider the members of your earthly body to be dead. Uh, for it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come to the sons of disobedience, and in them you also once walked when you were living with them. But now you also put them aside. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive speech, all these things. Don't lie to one another since you laid aside the old and put on the new self, which is being renewed in true knowledge according to the image of the one who created you. Friends, listen, God is doing new things in our lives. God is doing new things. Now listen, He's also renewing you. Created me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. If you've been walking with the Lord, but you haven't been walking with the Lord, then say, Lord, create in me a new heart. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, I repent from the old. I repent from going back to it. I repent that I even wanted to. You know, I've been trying to, I've been trying to go off sugar uh, only because I, I, I just don't need it anymore. But, but the other day I, I picked up a Krispy Kreme donut and bit into it. And, you know, I wish I hadn't. I mean, I got to think about that. That sucker is coated with nothing but pure sugar. And I didn't feel good about it. You see, I went back to the old, so to speak. I put it away. So I've got to learn to keep going with the nude, with the new. Dark chocolate, yeah, baby. That does it for me. Very little sugar in that. You know, but God wants to make you new. Turn your life over to Him. Repent, walk in the newness of life. God bless you. Have a great week. I'll see you next year.